Last week, I suggested what I think of as some important and central theological questions. I asked, are not many of us who are Western Christians, Christians only because we are Western? Surely if the most devout Christians have been raised in an Islamic context, they would be very likely devout Muslims. Is salvation, therefore, little more than a geographical lottery? Or put the other way up, is the God of love really content to consign the vast majority of the population of Earth to judgment and then on to some kind of hell based on their postcode? Would God, a God who is universal love, ordain that only the Christian minority of the human race can be saved? Well, first, thanks for the huge number of responses I received to last week's video. The whole point of these videos, this video series, is to create the opportunity to discuss, to debate, to talk. Now, one of the themes that came up and which I want to reflect on from my understanding today is this. And here are just three questions that I received that I think summarize many others. One read, if you're arguing that God loves everyone, then what's the point of becoming a Christian? Another said, so what's the point in evangelism? Why take Christianity anywhere or to anyone? And one other commented, if you're right, why do we bother to have missionaries? These are all important questions, but each one contains the same inbuilt assumption, and it's one that I don't share. They all seem to me, at least, to make the wrong assumption that the real point of becoming or of being a Christian is to be granted life after death and therefore to avoid obliteration or the eternal fiery furnace. A kind of pay now, claim later insurance policy offering eternal security. But from my point of view, the emphasis of the whole Bible, not just Jesus' teaching, is very different. In fact, it's much less about life after death and much more about life before death. Let me explain. As a teenager, the message I received on an almost daily basis from my school was that you're a waste of space, you'll never amount to much, you're not intelligent enough, you're not worth educating. But because of a particular girl that I liked, on Friday nights I started going to a youth club that was run by a local church and I slowly picked up from the people who ran it what it was that inspired them to do so. Their point was simply this, we're not here by accident, our existence has intrinsic meaning and purpose. Every one of us is created by God. Every life therefore has value and purpose. So it was that I found myself confronted with the choice between two competing stories. To my school I knew I was little more than a statistic, another meaningless life destined to drift along until I was eventually swept away on the tide of time, with barely a trace left behind. But to the leaders of this youth club I mattered. My life was significant. In their view I'd been created by a God, a God of love, who claimed to have fashioned me in his image. A God who said that I was here for a purpose and I was called by Jesus to follow him. As far as I was concerned, this new story changed everything. Because if it were true, my life counted for something, my future mattered. My time was not here to fritter away, but to invest. As part of this, I decided that if all this were true, then when I was old enough, I'd open a hostel, a place of safety for young people who'd never been shown that they mattered, uh, that they did matter, a place where they could live and thrive and find themselves. And I'd start a school that taught young people that their lives counted, and a hospital to lavish on people the care that they needed, that needed at their most vulnerable points. Which, of course, is how Oasis, the charity that I founded and still lead, got started in the first place. But the real point is this. The view I gradually gained of myself as an irrelevance had been swept away by the acceptance that my life must have purpose because I was created by God, who the leaders of the youth group told me the Bible defines as love. I say that I decided on all this, but at the same time, I felt prompted, I felt inspired, guided, or to say it as I now understand it, 
I felt called to serve this God with my life. I remember the whole thing like it was yesterday. Suddenly my life was not just or even primarily about my story anymore, but rather about the story, the big story. I felt as though I was lifted out of the pettiness that had come to consume so much of my energy to that point and into a different dimension. My small, flawed, personal, micro story was given a bigger, global, even cosmic context as I was caught up into God's big story. The most famous prayer, in fact the only prayer that Jesus taught those who chose to follow him, begins with these words. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now in my view, it's therefore a huge mistake to assume that the story of the Bible, understood best through the lens of the life and message of Jesus, is primarily or even exclusively centred around God's forgiveness of our sins and failings and the quest for life after death. The truth, it seems to me, is even more unexpected and generous than all of this. The overarching story of the Bible is that the God of the universe is working to establish his kingdom of love, justice, inclusion and peace here on earth where he calls us, as many of us who will, to be his partners, his agents and to work with him now in this great task of transforming our world. This, I've discovered, is the story revealed through Jesus' life and example. And this is the story which has brought direction and ongoing purpose to my life. As Jesus put it, I've come in order that you might have life, life in all its fullness, right here, right now. So, do you agree with me or do you see things differently? And why not have a go at answering those three questions that were sent to me? If you were arguing that God loves everyone, what's the point of becoming a Christian? What's the point in evangelism? Why take Christianity anywhere or to anyone? And lastly, why do we bother to have missionaries? I'll leave you to think about these questions in your terms. And I'll see you next week.